Are pesticides poisoning us? Yes. This is the big picture, etc. The big picture is our TV show on RT America, Friday nights at 7 and 10.30 Eastern. And if you miss it then, you can see it on demand where you'll find all our shows at youtube.com slash thebigpicturert. I'm Holland Cook, and here on YouTube, I'm going to give you the short version of three conversations we've had recently on a subject that is deadly serious. First up, the American family farmer from talk radio, Doug Steffen. It's in everything, Holland. Everything. This stuff, it isn't, it, and not even in the food, the air that we breathe, the stuff that they spray around in, in large quantities everywhere. If you want to avoid it, you got to be very vigilant, but you can avoid it, but sometimes it means that the stuff has to come from other places. It may be that your local growers can't find the non-GMO seeds unless they've just grown, you know, kept seeds themselves over the years and regrow what they've been producing themselves. But it's harder and harder to find organic, pure, and local. Ads boast that it kills weeds in your garden while comfortably guarding the good stuff. And it kills weeds in your lawn without harming your lawn. But in court this week, Dwayne Johnson says Roundup is killing him. And the court moved his case to the head of the line because Johnson may only have another three months to live. And he says manufacturer Monsanto knew for decades and suppressed evidence that the ingredient glyphosate is a carcinogen. Joining us now is Patty Lovera from Food and Water Watch, an organization which champions healthy food and clean water. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. On your organization's website, it warns that Monsanto's Roundup is a probable human carcinogen. We need to ban it. Lawyers probably told you to say probable. It's made by Monsanto. They've packaged it with genetically engineered seeds. And that in the mid-90s, they did a big push to get it approved so that they could sell Roundup and they could sell seeds that you could spray with Roundup. And it dramatically increased the amount of this chemical that's in our environment. And they made a lot of claims in the mid-90s when they were really pushing this out about how it was nothing to worry about, table salt was more dangerous, just a lot of claims about how benign this chemical was. And you fast forward now into the last couple of years, and finally more science has been done, and we're not the ones saying it's a probable human carcinogen. The World Health Organization has said it's a probable human carcinogen, and they have levels of possible, probable, you know, and they kind of work through all of the available science, and they came out with that determination a couple of years ago, and Monsanto went into crisis mode, and it really resembles what the tobacco companies did I was years. just going to say, yeah. I can picture those tobacco CEOs raising their hand in front of Congress and saying, what, right? Right. And so there's, I mean, and then lots has come out. There's been lots and lots of stories about this um, Monsanto paying scientists and but ghostwriting their papers um, and really a PR response to the World Health Organization saying there's enough evidence here to say this is a probable human carcinogen. And specifically, the one that keeps getting raised up is, is uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. That not only is Roundup used for... Uh, the vast majority of America's corn and soy products, but in California alone, this, uh, this herbicide is used on more than 450 agricultural products. Now, let's bring in Dr. Reese Halter, who introduces himself as an earth doctor, a powerful voice for bees, trees, and seas. Reese is all about Earth's life support systems, and he is author of, among other books, the incomparable honeybee and the economics of pollination. Give us the big picture, the ripple effect, how introducing these man-made toxins into nature will impact our diet, our health, our economy, our planet. 250 billion metric tons of persistent organic pollutants each year are pounded into our biosphere our air, our water, and our soil. The lion's share of all pollinating, 326,000 kinds of plants, are the bees. There's 20,000 kinds of bees that we know of, and there may be another 20,000 kinds to discover. The bees pollinate the plants. The bees, including the Clydesdale, are honeybees, they're responsible for almost $570 billion of commerce globally each year. 
The bees account for 75% of our food crops. The bees account for 2.2 billion pounds of honey. The bees give us 44 million pounds of beeswax, and they also provide us with potent pain and uh, other medicines that help us uh, make our way in the world. We cannot live on this planet without honeybees. At any one moment, 1.4 trillion honeybees are working to feed 7.6 billion people. The bees are in trouble. These neonicotinoid poisons, this is a class of poison that the seeds are dunked. The poison's pushed through uh, uh, the flowers into the pollen and to the nectar. And the bees are losing their minds and, uh, and, and shaking to death. The bees have got Parkinson's and Alzheimer's Ugh. all at once from these deadly poisons. And we've got to end it because if the bees die, we die. GMO, these genetically modified organisms, are now intellectual property. They're owned by big companies. Beyond this toxin issue, is this fake food? Is it less wholesome or healthy? Well, it, it's, it's poison. And when we put poison into the environment, into the corn, and we feed the corn to the animals, it biomagnifies up a thousand, a hundred thousand times to people. And we're eating poison at every meal. Each of us should have at least a couple food-bearing trees in our yard and a raised box to grow our own food.